We're not all bad, <laughs> you know, we're not all drug addicts either. And, you know, don't judge a book before you read it. Would it surprise you if I told you that more than 105,000 people in Australia are homeless? That may just seem like a number, but we have to remember that this is 105,000 people, humans, lives that don't have a home. They don't have a roof over their head, they don't know when their next meal will be, and they often don't have the means, support or services to help them get back up on their feet. I decided to go out on Swanston Street, a popular street in the heart of Melbourne City, to speak to some people and get an insight on their lives on the street. These are their stories. Um, I'm Aaron and I'm 31. From New Zealand, Christchurch, New Zealand. I moved to uh, Australia two years ago. Um, I've been working free picking and um, I've ended up in Melbourne and uh, for the last couple of months I've been living at Rough. I'm Adam Smith and I'm 35 years old, originally from Tassie. I just come over to, um, to work on the fishing boats. I was supposed to be staying with family and friends but when I got over here my dog was too big for the house and I couldn't stay for long and had to find somewhere else to stay and it's just been a bit tough at the moment. If I didn't have him it'd be a lot different. So he's a good companion, he's awesome. So it's bonus having him. <laughs> I couldn't just give up on him, he's, he means too much to me. I'm Paul and I'm 32. I'm from Tasmania but I've been in Geelong about the last six years. Been in Melbourne two months. Valentine's Day two years ago from this year, I uh, had my hand amputated. Uh, that was through um, through injecting drugs, yeah. through um, pills, uh, and I've just sort of gone downhill ever since then. Yeah. My name is Shane, and I am 20. No, I'm 37. Well, to start off with, I'm originally from New South Wales, but moved to Queensland in 2004. I had a $1,600 a week job, a house, car, all that. I was walking across the road and got hit by a taxi. Yeah, 70 k's an hour, snapped my leg clean in half. So I ended up losing my job, my house, uh, my car. I had to give their kid, my kids back to their mum because I couldn't afford to look after them. There was nothing left up there for me, so I listened to friends and family and they told me to come down here, I might be able to get a job and a new start. And yeah, pretty much hasn't happened like that, so. Um, a lot of people, cold, it's very lonely. It's not so bad, it's just pretty pretty breezy some nights. Oh, you wake up flat out of five or six, seven, eight times a night. A lot of judgmental people. There's not many places for me to go to the toilet, I have to go up to Hungry Jack's. Just gets a bit old, just sleeping on, you know, sleeping rough, but I've got me company. Constantly worried about who's going to jump on your head next when you're asleep or um, who's going to steal your stuff. That's nightly that happens, so. A lot of sort of people having gaze at you all the time and yeah. Um, it makes me feel vulnerable, I'm scared. Uh, I'm pretty depressed sometimes, but there's not much I can do, you just got to keep smiling and it's, there's a bit of light at the end of the tunnel hopefully and yeah, we won't be like this forever. I don't like it. Uh, it's quite different, you know. There's no use dwelling on it and just feeling sorry for myself, so just got to stay positive. Some people are, are, are good about it, um, like yourselves. Um, some people just walk around and they've got their daily lives to care about. Them. Some people are judgmental. I've had a lot of support from a lot of people, so it's, yeah, if it wasn't for them guys that helped me out, it'll, tremendous amount so I really appreciate it. any help that I can get from anyone it's yeah it means a lot. Oh they look down on us really oh, like everyone thinks that they're better than us it's not true though. Scum, scum, absolute scum pretty much if um, you're not with society you're pretty much a junkie you're pretty much lazy you're pretty much yeah not getting off your ass, you're not um, doing enough to try and help yourself to get off the street. That's the way the members of the public see homeless people. Uh, 
a little uncomfortable. It's you do get the odd one that walks past and has something to say about it, but what can you do? You know, like it's, there's always one or two in a group, so just yeah, water off a duck's back. <laughs> you know, it doesn't phase me. So you know, while they're talking about me, they're leaving some other poor soul alone. So. <laughs> Kind of doesn't worry me, you know, because everyone can, everyone's entitled to their opinion. I've got my opinion, so. That um, we're not all beggars and bludgers and, and druggies and alcoholics and stuff, you know. I'm here because I don't get Centrelink. I don't get help from the government. This is my only income, donations from people, and it helps me out, like um, with socks and stuff like that, you know. Just little things that I need. You know, take your time to just ask a question or two and find out about it before you judge. That's just my view on it. Shit, we're not all bad people, especially with me, with me um, stumping that. I'll walk into uh, Melbourne Central Station or walk into QV across the road and I get followed around like I'm, a, like I'm a terrorist or like I'm going to steal something because I'm just because I'm homeless, but I'm not a thief, I buy something. I don't have a home. I don't go home and get on a tram and go home. I don't have a roof over my head. I am 110% homeless. Show a fair bit more compassion towards homelessness. And they should come out here and see what it's like to be homeless and see the struggle that we go through. There are some services here to help me, like for showers and food. I'm not 100% sure about housing, and there's no like government funding for me, like um, payments or anything like that. There's lots of support around, like lots of drop-in centres and stuff like that, places where you can go have a shower, have a feed, and if it wasn't for them places, mate, it would be a lot tougher. I appreciate it, yeah, tremendously. Like the volunteers and that, they don't have to do it. Geelong's a lot better than Melbourne. The food services in Geelong are just incredible. Bacon and eggs every morning for breakfast. Coming to Melbourne, I thought it would be incredible actually. Coming from Geelong to a city, a city's going to have more services, but no, it doesn't. They give you the support, but there's not enough of it. All those organisations, you know, they get all this money, they get given all this money, they scream when they don't get given money. Salvation Army get given all this money, but where does it go to? You know, like I've been up and down, up and down, up and down for like the last three and a half years for them to try and get me somewhere to live and nothing. The best they could do is, yeah, like I said, one or two nights in a backpackers or a motel. You go to a motel, you get comfortable, and then two days later you have to leave. They have to get their shit together, pretty much. This morning, a young kid come past and give me the scar. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. <laughs> poor little bugger, God bless his little heart. How can you make a difference? Take the time to actually speak to someone on the street. Ask them how their day was. Ask them questions about their favourite things. I'm sure they would be happy to tell you. If you feel sceptical about giving them money, ask them if they're hungry. Buy them a meal. Buy them some socks. Buy them a blanket. Buy them a coffee. They will appreciate anything you give them. Don't look at them and turn the other way. We can't pretend that this doesn't exist because this does exist. This starts with us and this can easily end with us. <laughs>